right now for the championship round in the 106 weight class. We have Zane Russell of Wapakoneta and Owen Bates of Van Wert coming in for the championship. Yeah, so uh, this is, you know, a lot of these weight classes, we're going to see the one and two seed meet up, uh, which is the case in this situation. There's actually only four wrestlers uh, in the 106 pound weight class, unfortunately. So it kind of worked out exactly how most coaches probably expected. Zane Russell making his way to this final with a pin over Jeremiah Sisko and Bates making it here with a major decision 10-1 over Brody Sherrick. Yeah, and both these guys are young, but they both had pretty good years. Uh, I, I know Russell from Walpox had, had some good years at, at, at the middle school level, and, and I, I know Walpox coaches are expecting quite a bit out of him with a tough practice when he's seeing every day. Hmm. Oh, oh, I was going to say almost out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, he ended up calling him out, uh, and they go back to middle, almost a takedown by Russell as well, but... Still 0-0. Zero, zero. 115 left in the first period. And this is Wapakoneta versus Van Wert for the championship in the 106 weight class. Over on the third place match, which you are not seeing right now, that is Jeremiah Sisko of St. Mary's Memorial versus Brody Sherrick of Elida. And that's currently 2-0 in favor. Well, looks like St. Mary's is St. up right now. Yep. Looks like Bates is trying to lift that leg to, to, to get two. Still nothing so far, so good scramble by Russell to keep him from getting any, any points thus far and out of bounds once again. 32 seconds, just actually under 33 seconds here left in the first period. We are still at 0-0. Zero, zero. And, 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 you know, those watching, we're used to Walpaw being on the championship match a lot, and they've, they've won a ton of titles the past 20, 30 years. But, but Van Wert's really come on strong these last few years, and and uh, and Van Wert has quite a few guys in the finals as well, and, and uh, our, you know, and, and runner up right now for the tournament, and and having a pretty good season themselves. I think they're seven and two in the league this year. We're definitely seeing that too, even in this match. I mean, here we are, 11 seconds left in the first period, still 0-0. Zero, zero. Right. And that's what you want to see in a finals. You want to see good matches. You, you know, you don't really, you don't want to see the pins. You want to see two solid wrestlers, you know, battling it out for all three periods. And so, so far, that's what we've had. Uh, no score at all in the first period. We're watching again Zane Russell of Wapakoneta. He is the number one seed versus Owen Bates of Van Wert, who is the number two seed in the 106 weight class. Wapak will be down. So this is going to be important with as close as the match is for Walpole to be able to get their escape and get a get a point. Um, and, and obviously on Van Wert's side, Bates is just trying to control him, uh, keep, stay in uh, control throughout this entire period and not, not allow the escape or a reversal. So considering that this was only a, a four-person bracket, these guys have had a lot of rest time. Right, I don't know right. if that's a positive or a negative now that they're back in. Oh, and we got the escape, got the one point there. Yeah, yep, so Russell's up now one, and, and obviously, again, if, if it stays close, that's going to play into effect coming into the third period and possibly even overtime with, with choices. And, uh, but, yeah, back going back, I, I to me, I, I think that it's not good uh, sitting around all day. You know, I'm guessing they wrestled. Oh, and... Uh, Looks like a, looks like a uh, almost a reversal there, and you can see Van Wert's coach is going to the table to question if that mm -hmm. was a, uh, a reversal or not. In a match like this, obviously those points are really valuable. So you've got that coach rallying for that. Right. Well, and in the final, in the championship round, you're going to have two officials, and he's checking with his, he's checking with his sec, second official, and he confirmed that there was no reversal. So, still 1-0. Uh, Russell's winning with about halfway through the second period. It is just about one minute left in the second period. Championship match in the 106 weight class of the 2024 Western Buckeye League Wrestling Tournament. Our presenting sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delta, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 
Still nothing. Good scrambling by both wrestlers. Starting to hear a little bit from the crowd. And they, uh, so Van Wert now has the takedown. A good, good scrambling by both, but Van Wert got it. So uh, Bates goes up two to one, and, and and now just trying to keep control and not give that escape. And as I say that, the, the reversal happens instead. So again, very close match, back and forth. Russell's up three to two with 15 seconds in period two. 10 seconds to go in period two. No change in the score yet. Still three to two in favor of Wapak. So this will be real important for Bates as we go into the third period. He's gonna choose down, um, hoping to get the escape to tie the match back up 3-3, three, three, so. <laughs> so what's what's Russell gonna be thinking? Because he knows that's why he's gonna choose down. He's uh, right, he does right. not I gonna mean, want right, that. Right, Russell's definitely gonna to wanna to try to control, uh, and, and in a sense, obviously, he's trying to get some back points, but more importantly, just to stay in control and not get the escape, but that's a long two minutes to be able to control, so. So, uh, you know, starting off, real good match here. And good fight by both of these guys, and a close match. Guys, of course, will be getting ready for the tournaments, which will be starting soon, moving into the sectionals next week, uh, the pathway to state, hopefully. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Most of the WBL schools will be traveling to Defiance. Uh, I believe uh, a few of them are so, I think o it's OG, Bath, and maybe Kenton, actually, are the three that don't travel to Defiance. The rest of them don't travel to Defiance next weekend for sectional. And in that, and, and, and there four will then move on to districts, and then four from dif districts will move to Columbus, which is obviously the ultimate goal. Absolutely, yes. So out of bounds call, bringing it back into the center. We have just over one minute left, 1.14 in the third period. Three to two in favor of Wapak. There's the escape, so now it's 3-3 three, three with a, a minute left, so. And we're starting off really good here. Hopefully all the matches are this close. And, and we are certainly grateful to be able to bring you the 2024 WBL Wrestling Championships. We want to again thank our sponsors, Wabash Mutual Telephone and Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. If you're interested in sponsoring a future broadcast event, just give us a call at 419-339-4444 and we will connect you with our sales department and make that work. Under a minute now, 58.4 seconds, we have a tied match, 3-3 in the third period. Yeah, Russell's really going after him, but but Bates Owen is not losing composure and and, and and you know defending pretty well here. But this isn't where he wants to be because Russell's kind of got a little control over top and he's looking to get a a takedown here or get behind for that takedown. Nothing yet. Good scramble by Bates to not give it up. Just under 30 seconds. And Russell's still trying to work that. Have to get behind, nothing yet. 17 seconds, 15 seconds, 3-3 three, three in the third period. So if Russell holds on, they'll be going, or if Bates holds on, they'll be going to overtime. And just as I say that, it looks like there's possession for the two as time runs out. So Russell pulls off the win. So it looks like it ended five to three with Russell getting the takedown right as time expired. And there you have it, the 106 weight class. Zane Russell is your champion from Wapakoneta. Moving now to the 113 weight class, and in the championship round, it's Caleb Krogman of Salina, who was the 2023 runner-up in this class, against Hawkwin Estrada of Van Wert, who was the 106 champ last year. Yeah, so Estrada's a weight class up, and he won last year, so he's looking for his, his second uh, WBL championship. Of course, though, I imagine Krogman would like to one-up what he did last year here. Right, right, exactly. And it looks like he was runner-up last year and was fourth seed this year, but default uh, had a default win coming into the final. So we're not sure what happened to Tate Ditto, but it looks like that match wasn't finished. So 
Caleb Krogman from Salina got into a championship match and is trying to make something out of it and get himself a W Bill championship himself. So far, no points there. And we are under a minute here in the first period. 113 weight class here in the 2024 Western Buckeye League Wrestling Tournament. Oh, good, good attempt there by Schrader to get a little duck under there, but just couldn't finish, so. Yeah, so far it's attempts. Similar to what we saw in the last weight class, uh, Right. Both of these guys are not giving anything up right here at the beginning. It's a good snap down in a uh, two, uh, two for Estrada as, as we're running out of time here in period one. So he's just going to try to stay in control on top and get to the second period. So. And that wraps up the first period. Estrada is up two nothing over Krogman of Salina. You mentioned Van Wert's uh, strong program. They do come into this round second play, or se they're into the finals in second behind Wapakoneta. Yeah, yeah, they've had, like we mentioned uh, earlier, they've, had a, they've had a real good season and uh, finished the league this year at Sunday seven and two. Uh, Defiant, Defiance and Van Wert uh, both were seven and two this year and, and both had good showings. Two. There's an, another takedown from Estrada with some back points. So, and, and again, until those feet are out, they're still considered to be in bounds. And he's got three more back, so okay. he's up 7 0 here. 7 0. Not saying this should feel comfortable, but certainly that is a comfortable feeling at this point in right, the match. Right, good takedown and, and also to get the three back points to give a little bit of a, a, a cushion for Estrada as, he's, as we're about halfway through period two right now. And another good duck under by Estrada for another takedown. Another so he, two he's points. getting in pretty quick on those and he's going for another set of back points as well. And this could be some trouble here for Caleb. So it's 9 1. As you can see, the ref is watching. It looks very close to a pin. And, and there there's we go. a pin. A pin for Hulkwin Estrada gets his second WBL League Championship. This year in the 113 weight class, he is your winner and he is from Van Wert. You're watching the 2024 WBL Wrestling Championship. Our That's title sponsor is Wabash class. Mutual. Sponsored by Wabash Mutual, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. 120 weight class brings us Caden Merlot of Wapakoneta versus Quinton Simmons of Defiance. And again, a number one and two seed with Merlot being the one seed and Simmons being the two. And Merlot comes from a long line of wrestlers with his brother just graduating a year or two ago having a real good career and he's he's on track to do the same as he's already got to take down and, 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 and let him up for an escape so we're two to one right now with a lot up well if he's got brothers we know that this has been his life from the beginning it's in his blood yeah yeah i think it, i think dad wrestled and older brother wrestled and he is he's continuing the tradition and, and doing doing quite well this year himself and I know his goals are, are, are not just to get to, you know, we talked to sectionals districts. I know I know he's got goals to get to the state tournament and, and, and place there. One minute left in the first period. Currently 2-0. Wapakoneta is in the lead. Simmons is doing a good job of keeping that leg and not letting letting Malak get a second takedown, but here he's got to be careful because he's looking for a little tilt, uh -oh. and there's the... No control was given. Oh, oh, oh and, and a set of set of back points. 
No, it looks like only uh, two takedown was given. No back point, so it's four to one with just over 30 seconds in period one. A lot more action with the little guys, a lot quicker <laughs> as, as we get into the heavier weights, you see it kind of slow down, but we've got a lot of scrambling and a lot of quick uh, twos and, and, and reversals uh, so far in these first three matches. Malat's pathway to get here. Uh, he, had, he had a pin over Christoph Melendrez of Salina in 119. Quentin Simmons also had a pin All over right. Kale Dodson Wrestle of Shawnee in 144. In 128 pound weight class, we have Simmons. Yeah, Malat's always Simmons ran into uh, some of the, uh, we'll hear the Heise name later, and, and, mm -hmm. and he's, he's though maintained, staying a little lower, he's still at 120 while the Heise and Kirk boy who used to uh, be down in his weight classes have bumped up some, so. Otherwise, we'd see him uh, as a former league champion as well, but uh, I believe last year he was... Uh, That's right. Last year, Tate Heisey yeah. was uh, actually wrestling actually, one, 113 yeah, right, last year. Right. I think him and Malat had some battles, I believe, last year. And <laughs> I'm really blessed in Northwest Ohio to have such solid wrestlers. Um, I know I personally enjoy watching the strength and the mobility and the agility that comes with all of this. Yeah, yeah, the WBL has always been pretty solid and get, gets a handful of boys to the state tournament and even in, in placing, you know, so uh, hopefully that's the case again this year as well as Malak got another set of takedown, uh, another takedown in some back points and is going to increase his lead to 11 to two. And we are almost to the halfway point in the second period. And we've we've had two different uh, matches so far. We, first match was a decision uh, for for Walpock. Second match was a pin. But this will be the first one where potentially a tech fall could come. For those not knowing that, it's when a wrestler wins, uh, gets up by 15 points. The match is ended, and that's considered a tech fall. So we're getting close to that with him being up 13 to two. And there is still another minute here in the second period. Right, so, and you just see Malat keep working those tilts and call those some quick sets of back points in the wrestling world, and he's going for another set here as, as we're watching. And at some point, Simmons is going to have to try to catch him or go for something to get himself back in this match. And... Caden's going for another set of back points, and now he's going to go for the pin. And, and he got just like it. that, there's the pin for... So we had 28 seconds left in the second period, but we didn't need any more time. That's another win for Wapakoneta, this time in the 120 weight class. Caden Melot. We're moving now to the 126 weight class. I want to remind you that you can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month. Donate or download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. Tate Heisey from St. Mary's Memorial against Xavier Leal from Van Wert. Decorated wrestlers right here against each other. And this match is fast right from the beginning. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, we, we, We've heard the Heisey name a lot these past few years as we've done our WBL championship broadcast. And uh, his twin brothers both have some WBL championships, and he's right on that the same track as well with only being a junior and already has two championships and going for his third as he got a set of, uh, quick takedown right there for two points. Heisey made his way to this finals with all pins. The longest one may, taking two minutes and 36 seconds. Yeah, we, 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 going through all the different championship matches, we don't have anyone this year going for a four-time, you know, that's kind of the the uh, top level you can get here being a four-time WBL champion. And we have no no guys going for a four-time, uh, but we do have Heisey and I believe Ducat going for a three. Uh, so this is our first one of the guys that could get their third one. And so far he's been in uh, still a close match, two to one, but kind of been in control 
this first minute. Heisey was the champ at 113 last year, so jumping up to 126, a couple of weight classes moving right, up. Right, right, yeah, and, and I think locally, I don't think that really will affect him too much. He, he's a, very, a really high quality wrestler, as he's got another takedown right there for two. Um, but yeah, that, you're, you're right. When you get to the, you know, the farther, farther along you get, the harder it gets. And some of these guys that are bigger with a, um, as you get to the districts and state level, which I know is high as he's playing, it definitely will be a little bit of an adjustment going up a couple weight classes. Two more points there. So it is 6-2 with under 30 seconds left in the first period. Yeah, he's going to look for some near fall here and or just hold him as he, as they time runs out in, in period one. It looks like a set of back points should be awarded, which will put him up nine to two going into period two. So he ran out of time, but had he had time, he was probably going for the it, pin It was getting right close, there. yeah, it was getting close, yeah. 126 weight class, Tate Heisey of St. Mary's Memorial versus Xavier Leal of Van Wert. Second quarter, or second period rather, 11-2 in favor of Heisey. Well, and we have another situation similar to last one to where uh, Malat, um, you know, had that big lead as now it's 13-3. Um, and, and once some of these guys that are just so technically sound get close to a tech fall, then they'll go for the pin, you know, because ultimately the pins, the pins what they want. And right now he's just working, working takedowns against uh, uh, Leo from Van Wert. So it's 15 to four. Leo did just get an escape. Almost looked like Heisey gave him that escape. Well, yeah, and that's yeah, that's what some of these some of these top level guys just kind of work takedowns. And now I'm gonna guess he's going right for the pin from here. He's got him trapped in a head and arm and. Looks score is 17-5 at the moment. And, and there we the go. Pin. He gets the pin, and he is now a three-time WBL championship uh, champion, this time in the 126 weight class, Tate Heisey of St. Mary's Memorial. The 132 weight class brings us Wapakoneta versus Salina. Gavin Ridenour of Wapakoneta versus Peyton Stoffler of Salina. Yeah, and it looks like this is the first match where it's not our, the one and two seed. We were just kind of going through the others, and uh, Peyton was actually the third seed. He beat uh, Shawnee Reyes uh, two to one in a close match in the semis to be able to punch his way into the championship match. So. He had a major decision in the first round, a pin in the second round, and then, like you said, close, two to one, to make his way to the finals. Right, so so, uh, so good for him to get here, but now he's looking to, to get a champ, uh, championship, possibly, and right now Gavin's the one seed with, uh, thus far in control, you'll notice the ref just gave a stalling call against Slaughter, so. He's got to be careful not to get another one of those. The second stalling call would be a point given against him. So, Ridenour's path to the final came with a pin in the first round, a technical fall in the second round, and a pin in the third round. And there's a takedown for Ridenour. So he goes up two to zero and just under a minute left in period one. We have Bruce from St. Mary's. As you're watching this, we just want to remind you that we have an all new WOSN app. So if you have not downloaded that new app, yet that's something you want to do Lee's famous recipe chicken updates you with all area scores with the WSN scores app download for free the WSN scores app from Android or Apple stores visit WOSN TV or contact us for more information for nothing 39 seconds left in the first period so uh, again we we keep repeating the wall uh, name but but that's a uh, we're, we're of five matches in and they've been in the championship for uh, three of the five now and, and won so far the first two. So they're looking to capitalize and, and get a third champion here at the 132 pound weight class. A continuation of what they've done all year, coming in undefeated nine, nine to nothing. Yeah, and, and you're right, just not all year. In, in general, you know, you, 
you, you don't hear as much discussion, you know, obviously football and basketball kind of dominate <laughs> the headlines in sports and in high school, but, but Coach Rossifer and the rest of his staff in, in, at Walpaw, wow, they, they've, they've kind of become that dynasty locally uh, mm -hmm. over the last 20, 30, 40 years even of, of that dominant wrestling program in, in Northwest Ohio. And, and, and I, I don't know of any other sport where they've probably won 15 of the last 20 league titles, you know, so. Well, and he's got his spot over there in the corner of the coach. He's very calm right now. I mean, in times past, I've seen him stand up and yeah. question some things, but at the moment, he's just very peaceful, very calm there in the yeah, corner. Yeah, he's been there a long time. I think he started uh, my, my junior, senior year, and before him was a legend in Walpawk. His name is Coach Davies, was there for a long time. So, <laughs> so they've just been a real dominant program and real, you know, it, to me, what all the programs around would want to want to build theirs off of, of what Walpaw's done over the course of multiple years. And as the guys go out of bounds, making their way back into the circle, 130 left in period two. Walpaw is leading 9-2. We're watching Gavin Ridenour of Walpaw versus Peyton Stauffer of Salina. Yeah, Peyton was going after him there, and uh, looks like they almost bumped heads before they went out of bounds earlier, but now. Uh, Reinhauer's back in control and got another takedown and gave let, let uh, Peyton up for an escape to make it 11 to three now. Just over one minute left in period two. Reinhauer is the number one seed moving in here into the finals. And another takedown to make it 13. So again, we, we start off with a couple of close matches and the last few have been uh, close to that tech fall or, or, or pen level and, and we're there again with a, uh, another escape. So 13 to four match. Just about 30 seconds. 30 seconds now left in period two. Walpock up by nine. Mm -hmm. huh? As soon as and I said that, it changed. Take down. Yeah, another <laughs> takedown, so 15 to 11. And, and at this point with 20 seconds left, he's going to, you see a tight waist there that uh, he's just going to ride it out uh, as time runs out. Maybe try to get a set of points as he is, and you see another tilt and another set of three to get very close to that tech fall. He'll be up by, uh, let's see, it'll go to 18 to 4 so he'll be up by 14 as time runs out in period 2 so in this situation there's two things that depending on what the, rep, the uh, so so Walpaw chose so they're basically going for the tech ball because if he gets a takedown match is over oh. and what was that that just happened so stopped everything coach walked out now the refs are talking Yeah, there was no time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess the main clock had no time. <laughs> so now we're starting period three, and one more takedown will be a tech fall for right now. So he's just going for that last takedown. If if you're uh, if you're Peyton, I'm I'm just going for some type of five point pin move if if I can. And this is where, when, when I was coaching, you always wanted you guys to have something that you could go for, even if it doesn't work, because otherwise you're, you're going to be done. And as I say that, there's a two, and, and there the match it is, is over. Yep. The technical fall is what it takes, and he is your winner. Another Wapakoneta champion, Gavin Reidenauer. He is your WBL champion at the 132 weight class. In the 138 weight class, we have a previous champion in 132, Mason Ducat from Defiance versus Skyler Kirk of Elida. No Walpock, no Van Wert. <laughs> We've got blue versus orange. And I think that's the first of the night, isn't it? But we've got some solid wrestlers here. Ducat coming in, a two-time WBL champ. Yeah, yeah, Ducat. Ducat's another one, just like Malad, that's had a great, great career so far. Uh, experience at the state tournament, as has uh, Malat and Heisey. 
Uh, so I, I know I know Defiance uh, Coach Murphy's expecting a lot out of him, but uh, Kirk's had a good career as well. Uh, he's a senior and, and had actually a pretty close match with Dakot earlier in the year at the Defiance Border Wars big tournament that they host every year. So. Ducat is the one seed. Kirk is the two seed. Both gentlemen made their way to the final. Ducat actually had a had a bye. Um, technical fall. Kirk has wrestled just a little bit more. Did get a couple pins to make his way here. Yeah, this should should be a good match. And, and like I said, going to the match they had earlier in the year, they they had a pretty close one. Ducat ended up winning that one. Uh, as Kurt's trying to get it on the leg there, and good defense by Ducat to get out and go back to neutral in the middle. Now you mentioned these guys had a close match earlier. I said they know each other well. They know what they're in for. Right. There's, there's no surprises right now. Right, and, and, and Kirk's up a couple weight classes compared to where he was last year. Uh, uh, Ducat's, I, I believe, uh, right where he was, uh, maybe up one weight class, right? Yeah, as we're looking. But uh, um, so a little more weight than what Kirk was used to dealing with. And there's the first takedown for Ducat to put him up 2 0 with about a minute left in period one. But I found oh, and, oh. And it's good reversal by Kirk to get two back. And we suddenly have a tied match. We haven't had this since the beginning right. of our of our broadcast. Right. I noticed before the guys even started, Ducat could barely stand. He was ready to go. He was moving around. He was had the adrenaline pumping, and he was ready to wrestle. Well, and you had mentioned earlier with the 106 pounders really not be, be sitting around all day, and, and a lot of these guys in the finals have been sent for a few hours as well. So, so I'm sure they're eager to get going, and get, get get wrestling, and get back on the mat. All right, on mat two at 140 pounds for third place, we have. Fink from St. Mary's and Kolobong from Salina. Just about 30 seconds. We still are tied 2-2 between Defiance and Elida. Yeah, and if I'm Elida, I'm trying to ride the rest of this period out, not give up an, an escape or a reversal uh, to get to second period. Obviously, Dukat's goal is to, to get one here and, and not go into period two tied up. Almost a reversal by Ducat, but instead just a one escape. So now he is up three to two. Just about 10 seconds left in the first period. I think I saw Ducat look up at the, at right. the, at the time see how right much there. Time was left in. And actually he got another takedown there. So he goes up five to, five to two with six seconds left in period one. Where are these guys of the time? You know, they can't necessarily be looking at that score clock all the time. A, a lot of them, a lot of them are. Some, some don't pay attention. But Ducat's got that experience and kind of knew where he was at on the mat, so just took a quick, quick <laughs> peek to see where he was with time. And End of first period, five-two in favor of Defiance. So Kirk deferred and Ducat chose down. So. Uh, again, Ducat's pretty strong from the bottom here. So, so if you're Kirk, you, you're obviously going for some back points, but it's more importantly, don't give up a reversal. If you got to let him up, get, give just the one escape. Yeah, he grabbed that leg right there at the beginning, right. and that's 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 what's saving him at right. the moment. Right, Ducat's trying to work a, a, a whizzer and a roll, and he almost got it. Uh, Kirk still considered being controlled, but Ducat's about to get his escape, and there's another point for Ducat to put him up six to two. Got just so quick on getting, getting, sweeping that leg and getting, getting in so deep on a on a single leg and got another takedown for two. So and eight two is our current score. The two-time WBL champion currently in the lead as we are just about halfway through period two. Looks like loss of control was given. Uh, for Kirk to get one, so now we're back to eight to three, and they're back to being neutral. 
We want to thank our presenting sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe in Lima, Wapak, Delta in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Two more points, 10-3 our current score. Yeah, Ducat, uh, you know, we had we had a reversal early from Kirk, but otherwise Ducat is staying so tight and, and, and in control of most of this. And Kirk's going to have to really try and open up here this last period if he can get himself back in this match. 35 seconds left in period two as the guys make their way back to the middle. Unfortunately, for uh, as experienced as Ducat is, when he gets up five, six, seven points, that's quite a bit of cushion for someone like him. He's not going to make major mistakes to give up that lead. So Kirk's going to really have to push here to get himself back in this. One point there for an escape. 10-4 is now our score. Ducat's another one of those like Heisey who's got the experience at Columbus and has placed and I know that his goal is to not just get to the state and, and, and place, but to you know put himself in a position and maybe get, get on the championship match. You can tell that really he's he's calculating the whole thing. He's planning right. everything he's doing right now. Yeah, he, he, it's it's not a ton of flash. He's just always been solid and consistent, and and uh, maybe doesn't necessarily go for the pins or the the big five point moves, but just the. Uh, you know the wins. There's matches where maybe he could win by a lot more, but uh, but he just he, he just knows what he's doing and, and just works that whole six minutes pretty well. And we've got the final two minutes of those six minutes going right now. We're just into the third period, and Ducat is leading 12 to four over Kirk of Elida. So now Kirk's really got to come after him here. He's down seven, 12-5, tw and, and 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 push Ducat as he's. Trying to move and get a two there, and looks almost looks like Rest two. Mat two for 146 pounds for uh, third Almost place. two looks like. We have Brickner from Shawnee. We heard the fans Smith want two, but but a uh, good uh, scramble by Ducat to not give up the two. And just under 90 seconds left in this match. And that's a stalemate. That's actually. I think the first stalemate we've seen so far today, so nothing's really progressing for either wrestler to call stalemate and put him back in the middle of the mat. We're getting close to the final minute. Ducat is still in the lead. If that continues, he is going to become the three-time WBL champion. Of course, though, we got to get there first, and we do still have one minute left to go. Right, and this is where this is where Ducat can kind of obviously not slow down, but but he's in control. It's where Kirk's the one that's going to have to really, really come after him to get him, you know, get, get himself back in here and get some points. Oh, and good, good ankle pick by Ducat right to the back for some points and back for a takedown and a set of back points. And that's currently up nine, 30 seconds to go. That That's about going to end it there as far yeah, as I he's think got the points go. Now it's just not, not giving anything else up if you're Kirk. 17-5 is our current score. Looked like he was close to that pin, but right. then just a change in the, the grip there. Right, right, yeah, yeah, close. And again, Skyler's got a lot of experience himself, so he's one that, that doesn't give up a pins and kind of knows where he was, but unfortunately it's not enough, and Ducat becomes uh, our second three-time champion of the night. That's right. Defiance is Mason Ducat. He's your winner at the 138 weight class, defeating Skyler Kirk of Elida. of the 2024 WBL Wrestling Championship is Wabash Mutual. Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. 
144 weight class. Salina's Zach Graber versus Van Wert's Briggs Wallace. So another match of the one seed versus the two seed. Uh, neither have a won a WBL championship, so one of these guys are going to leave with their first uh, league championship of the of the night. And, and two points already for Salina. Yeah, quick quick uh, shuck by Salina uh, to go up 2-0. And, Trying to keep him on the mat, and he does. So close to looked like they were about to get called out, and they brought him back in. So good return by uh, Graybar not to get any type of technical on a slam. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not how he wants to start start things out here. Right. So the the returns. Got it does it. make for good television, right, right, but right. maybe not necessarily the right thing to happen. <laughs> So Zach made his way to the finals. He had a bye at the beginning and then a technical fall over Cole Brickner of Shawnee. For Wallace, he also had, uh, he, play, he wrestled Noah Bishop with a, oh, actually, let's let's I don't see the score there. Three. Then he had a, oh, with a pin and then a decision to make his way into the finals. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. They both had buys the first round and he had a yep, pin then decision, so. Thus far, uh, not a ton of action after that takedown uh, from Zach, he got the takedown. Now he's really controlled the rest of this first period and about only 15 seconds left. Well, and you mentioned earlier how the 106 weight class moves so much more. We always see this as we move up in weight class. The strength, the agility, all of those things make it change. The, the matches change. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and it just continues to change. You know, you get up to the heavier guys, and there you don't see many takedowns. A lot of times it's a takedown, and one of them's getting a pin. So, so it definitely slows down a bit on some of these weight classes. And well, we start a close match here as we move into the second period. 2-0 in favor of Salina right now. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Brady Overholt. And you're watching the 2024 WBL Wrestling Championships. So, so far we have Walpock with a few titles, Van Wert with one, Memorial with one in Defiance. So Salina's trying to break in and get there first uh, champion so far of the night with with Zach and looks like uh, looks like a locking hands was called is what the ref showing from uh, Wallace so that will be one more point for uh, and that's, gray bar it, that's illegal right, right 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 when you're on top and in control there is no locking hands if there's no control uh, if, if you're in the neutral position or, or obviously on the bottom that there's no locking hands but as far as the top goes, you, you can't be rocking hands. And On mat two, we have 152 pounds for third place. Another good, we have made good arm Elina roll. And, and Russell from uh, Salina. Almost a reversal by Gray Bar. And, and now he gets his escape for one, and they're back to being neutral. So four to zero. Just under 90 seconds in period two. Brady mentioned Salina trying to get their first WBL champion of this event. Uh, good shot by uh, Wallace to go after Zach, but uh, good sprawl and defense by Graybar to not give it up. And now he's trying to get a cross face to actually get the takedown himself instead. Under a minute, score remains 4 0. So they're called. Stalemate, so back to neutral to start over with 50, yeah, 50 seconds left and running. See another shot by Briggs, but but he's just not getting close enough, so he's not really setting that up, and it's relatively easy for Zach to defend and just sprawl and pressure down on that head. And again, when he's up by four, he can kind of he can afford to kind of stall out a little bit and he's trying to work a half and. If he can get it turned, it's not where Briggs wants to be. So I imagine Briggs wants to keep this at 4-0. Or, <laughs> right, well, he'd right. love to get some points, of course, but he doesn't right, want to give right up any now, more he's points. In, all in there, he's giving it up, and now he's not in a good position. As hopefully time will run out for him before uh, a pen's given up. But either way, he's definitely given up a takedown and a set of back points. 
Net ends period two, six zero in favor of Salina. So Zach will get another three for the back points and increase his lead to nine as they go into period three. Again, this is a situation where, again, Zach can kind of be more of the defensive one and protect his lead, and, and, and Wallace has to figure out a way to get some points. But. If you hear the whistle, that is because we do have another mat going on right now. Third place matches are taking place at the same time. You can also go to the WBL website to see the finals of all of the brackets. You can see how all of the other wrestlers fared in this conference championship as well. Right, so and they're not keeping the weight classes the same, so Salina's actually got a guy wrestling on both match right now, one for third at, I believe that's the 150 pound class, and uh, one for first at the 144, so. Trying to gain some points, and you know, you know, it, we we mentioned that Walpock's got quite a big lead, but there's a battle for uh, second, third, and fourth with Van Wert, Salina, and St. Mary's all being relatively close on points. So, yeah, coming into these finals, 1.5 points separated right. number two and three, Van Wert in second, and Salina in third. And here we have. Van Wert and Salina right. wrestling here, so right. these so, are yeah, this important. This is important to both of them, and, and, and as we mentioned, Van Wert's already got a uh, a winner, uh, one 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 champion. So Salina wants to get themselves one and negate the points that Van Wert jumped on them earlier. So we got one nineteen left to go in period three. Salina up nine zero. And Wallace has taken a few shots, and earlier they hadn't worked, but there he got in tight enough and got his first takedown of the night to, to make it a 9-2 to match now with a minute left. He's obviously going to have to go for a pin. He's, you know, the, he's down by too many points to just go for back points. So. Now you can see he was, uh, he was attempting to get over right. that back and get there, but uh, Zach Graber... Got the strength and got the escape, and now he's up by eight. Yeah, and Riggs is trying to get in deep on that leg again for another takedown, but, but it looks like he's just going to be, be a little little late on, on, on the comeback run he's trying to make here as we're down to about 20 seconds with Zach keeping a 10 to 2 lead. That's another stalemate call. It's a, just over 11 seconds left in this third period. And if you're Van Wert, you have to make a throw or something to go. just go for it. I saw him just have his glance toward right. the time clock to see where he could get. And that's how we will end it. 10 to 2 in your WBL champion in the 144 weight class, Zach Graber of Salina. The 150 weight class is just about ready to get underway. Defiance is Michael Waltz versus Kane Brown of Shawnee. First time we have mentioned Shawnee in these finals. Yeah, uh, and again, we're, we have the one and two seed meeting up here in the finals. And, and, and two, two guys again with, without any previous WBL championships. So. So we mentioned Slyna just got their first champion. And obviously now Sha Shawnee's trying to do the same and get their first uh, against we have the Defiance. Kane Brown made his way to the finals back. with a pin in 4.49 and then a decision 8.3. Waltz had a pin in 3.21 and a technical ball of 15-0. So a quick takedown by uh, Walls from Defiance to go up two to zero, and I was trying to work that wrist and work work a turn with a hard cross face there. We see.
I see a lot of energy in both these guys. I mean, they came in here ready to move. We saw that right from the start. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> Looks like coaches were getting fired up too before we saw them come out here. And, yeah, and, and going after each other as we're back to two to one. 45, almost 40 seconds left in our first period. Oh, out of balance, almost another takedown for Defiance, but foot stepped out first, so back to neutral. 34 seconds left in period one. Two, one is the score with Defiance in the very slight lead. It's been a while since we've actually had one this close. Right, right, right. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm, we have the league tournament here with with, with uh, 10 teams, but we haven't had any any weight classes so far that were full with 10 wrestlers. I think we're averaging six, seven guys a, a weight class. So, is that a reflection on wrestling as a whole? I know there's a lot of sports that we're starting to see a decline in. Is wrestling still pretty strong? Uh, yeah, it kind of comes and goes. Unfortunately, you know, it, it, it's, it's up and down and. And, uh, you know, these, these winter seasons are long, and, and you know, I, I don't necessarily know if we see the commitment from the kids that maybe we have. And, and, and unfortunately, it, it, it can go up and down, and, and I think we're, we're, we're kind of in one of those rebuild, rebuild cycles. I think a lot of these teams are having strong, we call them biddies and youth programs coming up, so hopefully we see the numbers improve. But. So some of the teams, your, your Defiances, your Salinas, your Walpacks, St. Mary's even, usually always tend to keep the higher numbers. Uh, but other struggle to, to get enough kids out. A lot of athleticism here, a lot of strength with both of these athletes. Waltz from Defiance, Brown of Shawnee, still 2-1, 130 left in period two. Yeah, uh, Shawnee's doing a good job of, uh, Kane's doing a good job of staying in control. He's down a point, but again, if, if he can control this period and, and without giving up an escape or reversal, he can get to a period three where it's his choice and, and get himself back to being tied. So a lot of time left, though, in period two. As we're watching this wrestling match, we want to encourage you to visit our website, WSN.TV, for scores, standings, access to our broadcast schedule, and the WOSN apps. That's WOSN.TV for our website. And Michael just got it escaped, so he goes up three to one now. As Shawnee's still coming after him, trying to get a takedown to tie it up. in on that single leg and trying to come around and good sprawl and trying to oh, almost there for another two for Michael to go up five to one. And I was just going to say, I bet Kane Brown really didn't want to give up any more points at this right. point. And, because and now he's actually in a cradle too, so he's got to be careful here he doesn't get pinned. And that's the first cradle we've seen tonight, actually. So yeah, you don't see you're that right. As, as often as as in the past. So it looks like he's, oh, and he is pinned. 27 seconds left in period two. We will not move to period three. Your champion is from Defiance, Michael Waltz in the 150 pound weight class. Well, we got a little hometown flavor here as we move into the 157 weight class. Your top seed is Anthony Hunt from right here in Kenton, and he is going against Bo Hertenstein of St. Mary's Memorial, who was your 2023 144 weight class champ. So yeah, these guys uh, are, are both, both good wrestlers. I know some people were really looking forward to this match, and Hertenstein really, really came out last year and had a 
great season last year being a champion and making it to state and actually placing. So. Well, and watching him right now, I remember seeing him last year because he's got, you just see the focus right away. His legs are moving fast. Both guys doing great, but I can now remember just the personality that right. came out here and seen as yeah, a wrestler. He, he just kind of ex was a kid that, I don't want to say flew under the radar, but really just exploded on the scene last year and had a great year. And I, I know he wrestled through the summer and, and, and did, did some uh, some tournament throughout the country even. Uh, so, and again, taking nothing away from Hunt himself. He's a good wrestler and you know, has had a good career himself so this should be a good match yeah Bo moving up a weight class from last year so he's uh, actually moving up a couple weight classes 144 is where he wrestled last year right and good takedown by Hunt to, to start off with the lead there and he goes up he goes up two to zero Hunt's path to the final included a pin in 119 and a 4-1 decision in the semifinals Hartenstein had a pin at one in 144 and then a 9-4 decision in the semifinals. Yeah, and you mentioned going up a few weight classes. The heavier we get, the harder it is to, you know, the the the, the size of these guys just get, you know, and the strength just gets so much stronger. So, so going up a few weight classes is definitely going to be a little different for Bo this year than it was last year. And we're seeing that now with, with just uh, the, the agility and the how compact Hunt is, not not giving up any of those throws or anything that Hurstein's trying to go for. And you can really see the muscles at him and he's right. uh, flexing right there as they're as they are wrestling. Yeah, it looks like he must have a scratch. Yeah, must a have a little blood. Yep. So. And we're down to eight <laughs> seconds here and if I'm Bo, I'm trying to get a quick takedown. If I'm uh, Hunt, obviously you we want to take down, but at the same point, if you just get to second open. period and, and maintain your point lead. Coppler, Vic, also. Do you know anybody who would like to watch this broadcast but isn't able to because they're not local? Well, tell them about the WOSN channel stream. You can stream WOSN anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. Still in a short... Uh, would you call this a medical timeout? Yeah, this is blood time. Yeah, yeah. They get they get five minutes of blood time uh, a match. Uh, and usually you never see any of the guys go past that. So just about a minute there. Uh, and now we're back. As time's going to run here in the period one with Hunt maintaining the two to one lead going into period two. On mat two for 177 pounds, going to third place. We have Walls from Defiance and Graver from Salina. And it looks like so Bo had choosing the choice down. there, and yet he chose down. So if he can get his escape, that'll tie the match back up. So that's obviously what he's going for here. He is quick. He's quick on his feet. But Hunt clearly is strong. And there he got that escape, so it's now 2-2. So this is where, where if you're if you're uh, low in St. Mary's, you definitely want to get a takedown here because Hunt does have the option, you know, the choice third period, which I, he'll, I'm most likely choose down. So if you're low, you kind of want to try to get a little bit of a cushion here by going up a couple points before we head into period three. You mentioned the off-season work that Bo did. That really is such a part of, of everything that these wrestlers are doing. Um, right. So many so many sports anymore. Right, right. This is just a tiny part of, of the year-round season they have. Well, yeah, and that and you're exactly right. Our, our top-level kids, uh, you know, the the I'm going to say the handful, the ten to twelve kids maybe here today that uh, that uh, you know, wrestling's their passion. They're doing it year-round. Um, and, and not not to take anything away from some of these other guys, but that's why you have your Heisies and Ducats and, and your Hernsteins here and and some of those boys, the Malots, because because this is this is year round for some of them. Um, 
and, and even your hunt for this matter, which is why we got a, a good match here. And we are just about 30 seconds left in period two, and we are still tied, 2-2. Two, two. And a stalemate call from the neutral position. You really usually don't see that too often, but nothing was, no, no, neither guy was doing anything. So, how many seconds will they, will the refs give them before they call uh, that stalemate? I would say, like, you know, depending on the situation, um, if you get to the five, eight, ten second mark, that it's definitely going to be called. You know, you just get get things changed up and, and, and back to some type of action. And you, you see, it's kind of being called quick and. I don't want to say it's being called quicker because the talent level is a little higher here, you know, but but it is. And, and these refs know that these guys have the ability, so they're going to call it quick and get them back to doing something. And it's been quite a while since we've had a match that is looking like it's going into the third period. Tied. Low scoring at this point. 2-2 two -two between Kenton and St. Mary's. So, so he did not choose down. Well, so, so yeah, he, so actually Hunt chose down and Bo just, you're allowed to, he just showed the neutral position and basically gave him the point. So that's why he's now went up three to two. So, so Hunt chose down, Bo uh, gave him. Uh -oh. And we've suddenly had a quick change in our match. It's now 5-2 and Kenton is in the lead. Yeah. Bo just didn't seem quite ready there in that situation. And he was just kind of a little flat-footed, wasn't on his toes, and Hunt took advantage of it and got himself a, a, a takedown as well to go up 5-2. to two. So if, if you're, if you're Hernstein, you really going to have to pick it up here this last minute and 20 seconds to get, get yourself back in here. Escape there makes it a two-point match again. 113 left in period three. Anthony Hunt looking to give Kenton their first WBL champion of this match. Hartenstein was the 2023 144-pound champion. Yeah, you see Hartenstein kind of pushing here. I'm, surpri I, I, I'm somewhat, su somewhat surprised that we haven't had a stalling call yet. Coach is not real happy with that last uh, yeah, out-of-bounds call. Yeah, and, and I don't disagree with Coach there. I, I think it, it, I mean, you, you can see Hernstein putting the pressure on, and, and I would have at least expected a stalling call. Uh, we got 52 seconds left. Kenton is leading by two points. So yeah, this is where Bo's going to have to come after him. Uh, you know, Hunt's just going to try and stall out and, and keep his two-point lead. So if you're Bo, you're the one that's got to got to be pushing and doing the work. So Bo's got to go for it. Nothing yet. If he pops his head, oh, oh. So, so, so any points no, with no that? No points given, no. No points given, they called out of bounds. So, so that's the second time that an right. out of bounds call. Right. And now Bo's got to climb. He's going to have to get. Nine some. seconds, eight seconds. Yeah, right there, oh. And if he's, no, no, no points yet. So it looks like Hunt's going to keep the win. We got people cheering, we got people jumping around. Probably the most animated match with our right. crowd that we've had so yeah, far. Yep, good match. And your champion there is the hometown boy, Kenton's Anthony Hunt. He is Wrestling your WBL champion in the 157 pound weight class. Sixty-five-pound weight class: Luke Lazarek of Salina and Reese Shinari of Wapakoneta are your two finalists wrestling for the title. So again, it looks like uh, well, no, this time we have a first seed, and it looks like uh, Reese was the third seed and beat second seed Defiance, Abel Paxton, in the semifinals to make it to the championship match. Two pins for Shinari to get his way here to the final. Decisions for Lazaric. So 
they're really coming after each other here. Good scrambles by both of them. No takedown yet. These are our tallest wrestlers right, that we've both, had yet. Right, both guys. And actually, on, they can't see the other mat, but so, so both mats have some, some, some taller guys wrestling right now. So. Walpock's trying to go for the takedown here. He's got the leg and oh. the two takedown was given. No back points, but just two as they're going to go out of bounds. And Reese goes up two to zero. Wrestling on mat two for third place at 192 pounds. Luke is your number Bad one seed coming in here. Of course, though, we know Walpock comes in with that undefeated season, so Reese is part of that team that every time in practice is wrestling against some of the top wrestlers here in the conference. Yeah, you're exactly right. The, the uh, you know, all wrestling rooms are, are tough, but I, I'll tell you, there, there's probably no one competing with what, what Walpock's doing in their practice room, so. So, you know, and then that just elevates all your guys, you know, your, your top guys, but also your guys that maybe go under the radar from time to time, wrestling the way they do day in and day out, gets him to the situation Reese is where he's going for a championship himself. Well, and that's the benefit of being a part of a team that is so top rated. Your lower level uh, team members have such an ability just to improve every day in practice. Yeah, and that's something that Walpog just done year in and year out and why they continue to win league titles and have in the situation they are right now. Back into the match. One minute left in the first period. And it is Walpaw currently leading over Salina 2-0. So Luke's trying to get an escape to give himself a point. And it looks like he's going to get that here, possibly. Reese is trying to stay in control and not give up the escape. And there's the point for Luke to make it uh, back to one to two, Reese on top. Just about 30 seconds left in the period. As the guys go, did they go out of bounds? Yeah, did, I yeah, mean, yeah. It, uh, he called yeah, it, but it's it, called out. And, and sometimes it's, yeah, it's a little confusing, but if one guy's totally out and the other's on that line, they'll call it out and just restart him back to the middle. sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We are thankful for Wabash Mutual and their ongoing support of local athletes and their ongoing support of WOSN. Almost about 10 seconds left here, so not a lot of, not a ton of action. Started off quick with a lot of movement and slowed down a bit this last part of the period one. So no points for anything no points. like that. Yeah, the whistle was called first and yeah. So. Like I have said before, that doesn't make good television. Well, and that's, yeah, <laughs> and that's where, honestly, that's what the assistant refs are there for to let the guys know maybe, <laughs> and they didn't, so they kept wrestling, so. All right, we're moving into period two with a close score. It's Wapak leading over Salina 2-1. You're watching the 165-pound weight class. Luke Lazarick of Salina, your number one seed, wrestling Reese Shinari of Wapakoneta, who was the number three seed. So back to being neutral, so another point for Reese to go up three to one. He's having some headgear issues and getting that fixed and back to wrestling. So as we are currently calling this part of the championship matches, it's 6.22 p.m. This tournament started, I believe, at 10 o'clock this morning, but of course the wrestlers were here far earlier than right, 10 o'clock. Right, yeah, that most of them have probably been here since about 7.30 or 8. I think weigh-ins were at 8, so it's been a long day. Yeah, you know, we were talking about that earlier, some some, some of the guys down there helping run things. We, 
there used to be three mats used and it moved a little quicker and so, so depending on the gym and, and what what school's hosting the league tournament it just rotates from year to year it's you can, you can sometimes be finished up by five or so and sometimes where we're at here to around seven -ish. and is that how it works it just rotates from from location to location yeah. everybody's yes. going to be a yeah. uh, to host it at some right. point every, yeah every year it just rotates through all ten and uh, just alphabetically, actually, and uh, it, now if your school is not interested in, you can choose to to bypass hosting. Uh, that happens every once in a while, but usually most schools are wanting to host and you know get a little do some fundraising for their own mm -hmm. wrestling program. So. Of course, you got the concession stand and other right, things that right, that right, can make it right, yep. make it monetarily worthwhile. So, so it's I, three three now. Yeah, we actually had a reversal there, a takedown by uh, Luke to tie it up three to three. So another two matches in a row here that are close so far. So we've talked about the fact that Wapak's got a, such a strong program, but we can't forget that Salina, this is the number one seed. So mentally, he's he knows what he's got to do when he's coming right. in. Right. Yeah, he's trying to keep that locked and they go out of bounds to go back to the middle. Just under 50 seconds here left in period two. It is tied 3-3, and it got really quiet all of a sudden Yeah, something here. was going on. It looked at like the third place match. So. Like, uh, you hear a lot of cheering. That's for whatever was happening over there. From OG and live from Salina. And we unfortunately aren't able to bring you the third place match uh, this year. We don't have a camera for that. But even just sitting here, it's difficult for me to watch both. Right, There's so right. much happening yeah, in both. Yeah, a lot both of, of action in both, both mats. So. Luke is trying to stay in control and, and, and ride this second period out to get into the third, tied up three to three. As yeah. it looks like they went out of bounds again, so they'll go back to the middle. So who is going to have uh, the choice in the third period to make the decision? I, I unfortunately uh, can't remember it, who started. It, I, I believe it should be Luke. I, th I think uh, Reese had that decision uh, and got an escape at the beginning of second period, so it should be. Luke, I think they are distracted from whatever was going on on the run or the third place match, and yeah, it was quite a bit of action in both mats. So you're hearing the clapping from one mat to the other. And if you want to know what happened in all those other matches, you can go to the WBL website. They do That's post the bracket results by now. Of course, now. that should be posted Murray, there on their Saint WBL Murray's website. And you can see back. just how all the other wrestlers fared as we bring you these championship matches thanks to our sponsors, Wabash Mutual Telephone and Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Heading into third period, we are still in a tie between Salina and Wampakoneta. Three, uh, four, three. We are not in a tie. Yes. Yeah, so, so what happened was it was Luke's choice. He chose down, and then we've seen this earlier. Reese just instead of even trying to hold him down, he just showed the ref neutral and basically allows him to go up and gets his point. And now he is up five four. So he did not have to. They started in that neutral position, and he immediately was able. To, right. to attack basically in that just, way. Yeah, basically just giving the point away. Uh, basically, Walpock was saying, we're going to give you your point to go neutral because we think we're better at on our feet, is, what, is basically what Walpock's saying. And um, It worked. Uh, he got a takedown to go up five to four, but now now Luke's trying to get a reversal himself and lock on that, that leg and kind of climb the body, get a uh, reversal himself to go back up. And he gets that. So we've got a match going, guys. It's one minute left in this period, and Luke has taken the lead at 6-5. So at this point, yeah, Reese has to, you can hear Walpock's coaches yelling to get your head up and get moving. You gotta get going here. Time's gonna run out. 42 seconds, 41 seconds. And that is definitely not where he wants to be. Oh. oh. Looks like another. Oh, wow. So quite a bit of action here. As you can see Payne standing up. And... So it's 8-5 in favor of Salina right now. Under 20 seconds yeah, to go. Yeah, I believe it should be seven. 
Uh, so I'm, Salina should have seven. Right, I think. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, and then now they okay, now it's the eight board. seven. One point difference. All right. Wrestling. Yeah, and what Wal a match. Wallpark's coaches are pretty upset. Um, they, they definitely feel that there was a set of back points given. We have Buell for Wallpark so, and Edemeyer for Shawnee. So we don't have a declaration yet. So Is that as because they're as, having a yes, discussion? As far as what we're seeing on the board, uh, uh, Salina won eight to seven. Uh, what Walpock's arguing is that there should have been a set of two back points given. And, and, and Coaches are still discussing so, here. So, so Walpock has now been given the two. So there are, they argued to get the two. I, I think he showed two and it was never added on the scoreboard. Now, luckily for Walpock, you'll see they have their iPad down there and record the, <laughs> the uh, match and are showing, hey, we were given two, but it was never awarded on the scoreboard. And how does that work? Because can they, can they do a replay no, and review no, that? No, it shouldn't be. No, no, because no, that you got to have a standard yeah, that's, here. That, that, that's not part of it. Uh, really, the deciding factor is uh, the ref, the, the second ref. That's why there's a second ref on these championship matches. He's confirming that yes, two should have been awarded and it was just forgot on the scoreboard. And as we're talking, it looks like they moved some matches over. Yeah, so we've got So they're the kind of messing with us here, but they've j just moved a championship match over to the other mat. That's Wyatt Buell of Wapakoneta against Drew Niedemeyer of Shawnee. That's the 175 pound class. Buell was the 2023 150 champ. So as we still are waiting for the finish here on 165, we've got the 175 match going on. Yeah, yeah. I think without any warning to even the fans or anyone, they the, they move some championship matches on, over to a third place match. Uh, so they're just moving right along here, and now we have a two two match, both with championship matches going on. So. And that is a zero zero right now as they went out of bounds, and they're bringing him back to restart. We can move back over real quickly here to the other one. And, and Wapakoneta is your winner. Reese Shari with the 165 weight class. Wrestling on match so one, yeah, they did then end up awarding those two points back to Reese. And yes, he ends Mary's up being the champion. So looks like Salina coaches aren't too happy whatever the situation was there. But congrats to Reese from Walpock on the w first WBL championship. 175 weight class. We've got Buell from Wapakoneta and Niedemeyer of Shawnee underway. 15 seconds left to go in the first period. And it's a 2-0 score in favor of Wapak. And as we're mentioning that one, they're jumping right to 190 on map one, which is, looks like Cole Donovan from St. Mary's and Brody Presser from uh, Wapak also, so. Donovan was the 2023 runner up here at 190 and they are getting ready to start their match. So it's, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's, it's nice that they're trying to speed things along, but it's taken all day, so it kind of makes it hard on fans and us to, when, they, when they're now splitting the match with championship on both, so we'll try to That's right, we're asking call. for some grace here yeah. as we try to bring you the best of both that we possibly can here. Uh, back over, let's move this over. 2-0 right now, off to a quick start here in the 190 class uh, with yeah, Walpock's on top right now. A takedown early by uh, Brody. So 2-0, Walpock's 2-1 now, because we had a, had an escape We had an escape, but 2-1, Walpock. And as we're we're showing this match, Wal Buell's also up on 4-0 uh, uh, in period two. That's right, let's move that over, that camera back over there, show that for a little bit. Period two, Buell is winning 4-0, just as Brady said, in period two. Just little over a minute left to go. Yeah. Over back here on the other mat at the 190. Just about the end of the first period and we are still at 2-1. It's still 2-1 after that takedown. They've been neutral for, for the most part. Uh, and 
both are they're about at the same amount of time left, both around 40 seconds or so with uh, the 190 match being in period one and the 75 match in period two. So we'll stay over on this 190 match as there looks like a, some he a headgear issues over in the 175 match. 3-2, we've had a change in lead here between Donovan and Presser. So St. Mary's Memorial yeah, takes the like lead a, here near like the end of period like, one. Yeah, a little uh, standing takedown there to where uh, even though they're still up, if uh, Walp or sorry, St. Mary's had control and got it quick too to put himself back in the lead as we move into period two. In case you're wondering what's going on in the 175 match, they still are working on the headgear, so that match is still in a break. Here we are at 190. Yeah, we'll stay on the 190 match for now. 6-0 and... is the score, by the way, over there at 175 with Walpock in the lead. So we're we're neutral here at the 190 with St. Mary's winning 3-2. to two. Let's quickly move over to the 175 just so we can give our viewers a chance to see that. 6-0 is your score right there with 30 seconds left in period two. Let's move back over here to 190 now. Still 3-2 with just about 90 seconds left in period two here. Yeah, and St. Mary's got another takedown, so Donovan's going up now 5-2, to two, and we'll stay on this match. Uh, looks like Beals has controlled most of uh, the match over in the 75 pound weight class, although. Escape now for Shawnee, so that score is 6 Shawnee, 1. Yep. Just about ready for the third period over there. And over on our mat one, uh, Donovan staying in control, trying to work cross face there and get maybe some back points and just ride this period out with about 40 seconds left. What's the possibility he can ride this out without a stalling call? Uh, as long as he keeps working, and that's the key. Like, it, you know, if you're just on top and kind of being dead weight, you're going to get called for stalling. But if you're working and moving, uh, you, 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 can, you can go a whole period. Although they got called for going out of bounds there, so. Donovan made his way to the finals with a pin and then a 2-1 decision for Brody. He had a pin and then a 12-10 decision. So close one for Brody. Oh, an, an escape for uh, Brody. So it's back to three to two. So they're within a takedown of one another as Beals thus far been in control of period three over on the other mat. We'll stay on. We'll stay on this mat. They, they're about. There's two seconds left in period two with St. Mary's keeping their five to three lead as they go into period three. So we're still at a point where anything could happen in this match. Right, right. Two so points is right. almost tied. <laughs> and it looks as if it was Walpock's choice and they're choosing down. So obviously he's trying to, uh, looks like, so Saint, again, another one of those St. Mary's gave him, gave him a point and he wants to go on his feet. So now it's four to five, St. Mary's winning with two minutes left. There's one minute left in the 175 pound weight class and the score is still 6-1, less than a minute there you see with Wyatt Buell, the 150 pound champ in 2023, currently leading over Drew Niedemeyer of Shawnee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Buell's going for a second title and uh, not much happening over in that match. He's, he's done a great job of staying in control and, and kind of riding things out. And, just hoping to pick up his second WBO title with just under, just about 30 seconds. Got 90 seconds left in the 190 pound match. Still one point here, 5-4. St. Mary's Memorial, currently your winner. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier, Donovan was a runner up last year, so he's trying to hold on to this lead to get his first uh, WBL championship as 
Presser himself hasn't had one yet either, and he's trying to add to Walpock's collection of titles today. Walpock coming into the finals uh, with a somewhat substantial lead there. Van Wert and Salina just a little over a point apart, dying for, vying for second place. And over here on the 175 match, that one is finished. Yeah, that ended up finishing six to one with Beal getting a, his second WBL title. So congratulations to Walpock on that title. And we'll stay in this match as it's still close, two, five to one. And as I say that, Donovan, Donovan got another, yeah, Donovan got another takedown to make it seven to four. Just 30 seconds left here, three point difference. Currently, St. Mary's Memorial on top. Cole Donovan trying to get that win. Last year, he was the runner-up. Yeah, he just got the legs hooked in there, which is where he wants to be. He's just trying to hold on here and ride out. And, and as soon as this match is done, we will move over to 215, which has Jace Nouse of Wapakoneta against Tanner Mele of St. Mary's. Hearing the St. Mary's name quite a bit Right, lately. yeah, yeah. They got, got a, quite a few guys here in the upper weight, so. So that's going to finish that match. So we'll go over to uh, congratulations to, to Cole Donovan on his first WBL championship. And uh, I believe our second or third, second one for St. Mary's today. And Jace Naus moving up in weight. And you can see what's happening over here already very quickly. Round one. Three, five points. He's already at five, zero right now. 30 seconds into yeah, this 215 pound match. Yeah, Naus is. Naus is very strong. He's a he's a good football player in the fall, and, and I know they expect a lot of things out of him in the uh, in, in this wrestling season. He's he was coming off an injury injury from football actually, but I think they have him back to where they want him, and and uh, and Tanner's going to have his work cut out with him with Naus as he ha gets another takedown and goes up seven to one already. Seven one, less than a minute left in the first period. And He's looking, let's yep, take a look. And a set of back Close. points of nine, no pen, mm -hmm. but it's another set of backs so of nine to one now. Once we get out of this period, we will move you over to the heavyweight, which just started. That's Bolenbacher of Van Wert versus Hinojosa of Defiance. I've been waiting the whole match <laughs> to try and uh, say that with the proper, right. uh, the proper Spanish. Hopefully I got it, Alex Hinojosa. And it looks like Bolenbacher had a close one to get here. He won nine to seven in overtime to get into the championship match. He, in the semis, beat Matthew Murray for a memorial, so. Yeah, you see them grappling it out at the beginning. Zero, zero right now. Over here on looks this like, other match, looks like seven seconds to, to go. Yep. He's up nine, one. We're talking about Jace Naus. So Naus has controlled most of this first period and he's up nine, one going into period two. Not a lot of action with our heavyweights so far. They're just still uh, in the neutral position. No takedowns for either guy yet. And, and we mentioned earlier when we had the lightweights on, heavyweights are a lot different. It's a, usually one takedown and then a pin. Uh, so, and sometimes that doesn't happen until right, the third period. Right, right, right. Second period underway now between Naus and Melee. Naus got a quick escape there, and he is up 10-1. And as, at, just as he gets the escape, then a takedown to go up. 12-1, so he's going to be looking for a pin or tech fall is what he's doing because he's getting close to that 15-point that range. Still no score for our heavyweights. Brees Bullenbacher of Van Wert versus Alex Hinojosa of Defiance. Number one seed versus number two seed in that 285 weight period. 20 seconds left in that first period. Another takedown for uh, now, so 14-2, so we'll head over to the heavyweight match hoping, well, I hoping something would happen, but nothing. So I guess we'll go into period two, tight zero, zero. Just a few seconds left here in the period. Again, want to remind you that our presenting sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So that's the end of the first period end for of, our heavyweights. End of first period for heavyweights. And now hopefully we're seeing some action. They're down, so. Obviously, we're going for stand-up at where Van Wert and the turn and pin if you're defiance. And we'll head over real quick to the other match because it looks like we're either going to get a possible pin or close to a tech fall coming. 16-3, 19-3, and, the and there it is. Jace Naus, he was the 2023 champ at the 190-pound weight, moved up to 215, 
and he is your 2024 Western Buckeye League champion, Jason House of Wapakoneta. And now we can match. focus on our final match. Heavyweights are in period two, and we do have one point here. Yeah, we had, uh, looks like Alex was down in, uh, I believe he's the one that got the, no, I'm sorry, uh, Van Wert was down. So B Bollenbacher was, it chose down second period and got the escape, uh, so that puts him up 1-0. 115. About halfway through period two. 115, 122. Sorry. Come on down to the bullpen. We're going to get ready for awards. So after a long, long day, a lot of waiting, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of things happening, we have made it to the final match yeah, here. I, I think they, they've, uh, this this round's went faster than any of the others, so they're, they're trying to get through these, this round quick, and they have, so. It took a while to get here, but once we started a championship round, it, it went quick. Papakaneta coming in, nine and zero, undefeated in the WBL. Uh, they will move on to be your overall winners here in the final, I'm not just talking about this, I'm talking about overall in the Right. In the season. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They'll they'll take the title. They had a, they they had that big enough lead we mentioned earlier heading in and got a couple more wins in the championship round. So uh, just a few seconds left here in the second period. One zero. You know we started out with our lightweights having low scoring at first, and now here we are finishing out with a very similar type right. of scoring. So now, yeah. And the situation is going to be that Defiance is going to choose down, and they're going to hopefully get their uh, escape. <laughs> then it puts us back to 1 1. So hopefully, we don't run into our, our first match of the night in overtime as our last match. <laughs> so. Van Wert trying to not allow that escape there. See Bollenbacher really working to keep his hold on him. So far, he's returning pretty well, but there's a lot of time left, so. That's right, we've got just over 90 seconds here in period three of our final match in the 2024 Western Buckeye League Wrestling Tournament. The guys will be moving into the OHSAA Tournament starting next week with the sectionals. And you talk about how quickly things move. The second mat is already right. is already disappearing. Yeah, they're they're rolling to, it up right now. Yeah, it seems like for the pace moving all day, it's moved on, it seems to be moving a lot quicker uh, in this, tonight. So 6.45 is the current time here on this Saturday. Meet started about 10, but as Brady had said, weigh-ins was earlier than that. These guys have been up since probably 5.30 or 6 this morning. And there's the point. And now, now we are tied, so now we need to get some action and a takedown from one of these guys in this last minute. So, Brees Bollenbacher, the number one seed from Van Wert. Alex Hinojosa from Defiance, the number two seed. Less than a minute in the third period, and our score is 1-1. One, one. Oh, and Defiance going for the takedown. I'll give him credit, but that's going to be a tough one. And all Van Wert's got to do is get behind and try to get a trip, and that's could be the match, if so, and there it is. So. Two points for Van Wert, so and our score is now 3-1 with less than 30 seconds. So the first takedown of tonight might be all that that Brees needed to give himself his first WBL championship. He's 20 about, seconds to go. Yeah, about 20 seconds to hold on, and he's going for a cradle. You don't see that often at heavyweight, and he got it. So, so he's going for the cradle and possibly the pin. Looking at those shoulders. And there it and is. And he got it. Brees Bollenbacher of Van Wert finishes it out with a pin, and he is your heavyweight champion in the WBL Wrestling Championships. Well, any final thoughts, Brady, as we bring this to a close? Uh, no, it ended up, you know, a lot of good matches there towards the end, and uh, um, some some exciting matches on both as, as we try to get through those last few with with <laughs> championship matches on both sides. But but no, good some some uh, four or five guys that had some multiple championships, and then a lot of guys that had their first. So congratulations to all of our champions tonight. That's right. Congratulations to the winners, and thank you for joining us for this broadcast of the 2024 Western Buckeye League Wrestling Tournament. And our title sponsor again is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud to support Mercer County Athletics. For Jacob O'Neill, Nick. 
Fraley, Brady Overhold, and myself, Jennifer Beck. We thank you for joining us for this broadcast of wrestling. You've been watching WOSN. The trash that's in the bleachers.